big hello to you all. Okay, the latest little setup we're looking at is my version of the Flynn type arrangement. However, I'm not uh, decoupling magnets and all that sort of rubbish using coils. So we'll first have a look at our, what we'll do is we'll get rid of this scope lead out of the road. We'll look at the coil first. The way I've made this is this inner core, which is ferrite, is actually a magnet. Well, it's actually two magnets glued together, so we have a north on the top, a south on the bottom. And they're from a magnetron out of a microwave oven. Around that I have wound what I call the tank coil, which of course goes to this tank circuit here. And after that I have wound some soft iron wire around that two layers. Uh, this is to make up a second core. And then around that I have wound our primary coil, or drive coil. That has simply been driven by a transistor, tip 31 I think it was. And of course the transistor has been driven by our signal generator. And the reason I've done this is so I could fine tune the tank circuit, uh, which makes a hell of a difference. Now, the tuning frequency of the tank circuit is dependent on the load on the output. I noticed when the two LEDs blew that I had to change the frequency to um, gain maximum voltage across that resistor within the tank circuit or amplitude if you want to put it like that so uh, that's basically what we're doing we're pulsing this coil here which neutralizes the magnetic field across this coil here our tank coil so uh, while this top part of the magnet is our north when this coil pulses this will be the south pulse of the coil or the south side of the coil when it is switched on. Of course that gives us a south field on the top of our wound iron core. And we have a south and a north, the neutral point, which is our tank circuit um, coil which will be the neutral point of our magnetic field. When this coil switches off, the magnetic field comes all one polarity on the top half and all one polarity on the bottom half of our tank coil. So we're basically uh, rocking this magnetic field backwards and forwards across our tank coil. The input side, of course, is being fed by my power supply at 12 volts. It first goes into this 4700 UF cap going through a diode here and into a second 4700 cap. The power from the circuit of course is drawn from these two caps and that diode is simply to stop anything that might be going back the other way. The base of the transistor has this 220 ohm resistor um, on it which of course then comes out to the positive side of our signal generator. The output um, from the primary coil, the inductive kickback gets sent through this diode here and into this storage cap. Then from the storage cap we will be going across to a charge battery. The whole time this is running with or without that charge battery, uh, our tank circuit is always loaded by this 18 ohm resistor. Um, changing that resistance, like I said, changes the frequency at which the tank circuit operates at maximum amplitude and changes the whole dynamics of the system, including the output on the primary coil. Um, our scope will, of course, be hooked across our tank cap channel 2 and channel 1 of the scope 
the yellow trace will be hooked across the base centimeter of the transistor. So that's basically what we have. Uh, the one-to-one -one isolation transformer, don't take any notice of that. That's not actually part of the system now. It's just another experiment I was doing and um, actually had a negative result on the system. So that is disconnected from the system. So uh, one other thing I'd like to mention, after the 220 ohm resistor, I have 1000 millihenry inductor going to the base. And uh, believe it or not, that actually changes the way this system operates a little. Not a lot, but a little, and it certainly brings the current draw of the system down while maintaining the output both from our primary coil and our tank coil. So um, that's what we have. So it'll be the first part of this video and uh, well actually we'll make it the first video a run through of the setup and uh, then we'll make a second part of the system running. The two meters here reading current going to our 12 volt battery and the voltage of the battery of course which is there and of course our amp meter on our power supply will be telling us what happens when we connect the output to a load as far as input power goes so um, I'll get this one converted, uploaded and then we'll go on to the running of the system.